time come. Let us not be defeated, sir. Let us seize the day and take it roughly from behind, as the colonel used to say in his unfortunate way. And we're here for the daily space weather, folks, looking at the sun in 171 angstroms. We see low levels of activity, very low solar wind data, possible cosmic ray flux. We'll go look at the uh, data on that. Let's zoom in on this setting plage here in the south. And there's that region down there in the southwest. A good photo op for the day. Here's the equatorial region. And there's the north. Here's a 193 angstroms view. Zoom out and look at coronal holes. Small coronal hole system rotating out of the Earth facing region there. We are looking at nine hours in all three of these views. Active region in the center is not a sunspot. There are zero sunspots today. And here's the 304 angstroms view. Again, that's nine hours of activity there, folks. On today, January 13th. X-ray fluxes. Some activity there, but basically just flat line. And the 10.7 centimeter radio flux has dropped back down to 72. KP index is currently at one, and we saw two three hour periods of a KP zero uh, before midnight last night. And let's look at the cosmic rays. But first, we're gonna look at the real time solar wind. And the phi angle is in a state of shifting as we make the video here. Solar wind density very low, 1.12 protons per cubic centimeter, and it's been steadily ramping down in speed also down to 372. It's actually on the move ramping up as we speak. There's the data from ACE, and you can see missing data on ACE around 2200 last night, as well as on Discover. Let's take a look at cosmic rays. And we always link to the Network of Cosmic Ray Station site under the video. Here is the situation at Apatite and Barentsburg. Showing 24 hours in the top pane and 30 days in the lower pane. And there are the Barentsburg neutron monitor data. Next we'll look at Athens, Greece. And there's the Athens, Gre Athens, Greece data. Nothing too interesting there. Next, Mexico City. And there's 30 days of data from that. Let's see if Moscow's sending data yet. And Moscow's been on vacation since before New Year's Eve. And lastly, we've got Olu, Finland, and DOMC Antarctica, DOMB Antarctica not sending data. There's Olu. Nothing too exciting happening there. And there's DOMC Antarctica. So no apparent uptick in the cosmic ray according to the neutron monitor stations. There's the relativistic electrons, which went up as we forecasted. And now they're in more of a steady mode here like the GOES electrons, and there you can see the data from the GOES 14 and 16. Next we'll look at the ionosphere, which has got anomalous data around the prime meridian, just north of Antarctica once again. And the South Pacific anomalies are not quite as pronounced as they were six weeks ago. So in any case, there's six hours. And let's bring up the latest image here. As we're putting the cosmology segment in the main video today, folks. So <clears throat> lots of stuff to cover. There's the latest image. And you can see this odd line here right on the prime meridian. Must have something to do with some kind of data gathering issues or something, as that's clearly anomalous. Anyway, here's the GOES magnetometer. And it's looking pretty sawtoothed here as forecasted yesterday. And we are most likely in the South Pole-oriented polarity of the current sheet. 
Here's the Gong 2 data. Just keep in mind this is four hours and five minutes old. So the Earth is most assuredly in the South Pole portion here, noted in red. And again, very low solar activity, so nothing to forecast there. For you new viewers out there, and thanks to our new viewers, this is Stereo A out here on the left, and this is Stereo B. Stereo A is called Stereo Ahead because it sees solar weather ahead of the Earth. Stereo B sees solar weather behind the Earth. That's also why we call this the east and why we call this the west of the sun. And here's where stuff is in the solar system. Note how all the planets are on the opposite side right now. There's where things will be in a week. And here's a star chart where I'm located. If you want to build your own, check out in-the-sky.org. Just come up here, click on charts, click on all sky charts, and you can even animate that map as Mars is just rising if you've got a low horizon. Go get some telescope... Learn to speak English and get some telescope images of Mars. Now, here's the magnetosphere, and talk about a weak magnetosphere. Practically no pressure showing up in the model here. This is one of the weaker modes that we've ever documented the data in, folks. And we'll let that play through all the way again there as it refreshed on us. And you see that very low density solar wind reflected there. We'll show you the still images of the density real quick before we move on and look at the ground magnetic perturbations, of which there aren't much. And this time they're magnetic and not solar wind induced. There's that weak density showing up also. And check it out, folks. That is one of the weakest that we've ever shown. Practically no magnetohydrodynamic pressure there. Check it out. Ultra weak magnetosphere. Here's the ground geospace magnetic perturbations, delta B. Changes in the Earth's B field. And both of these slides are four hours of data, courtesy University of Michigan Geospace Model. Welcome to the Neo-Renaissance and the Pole Excursion and all kinds of interesting science being rewritten on the daily. And let's do the earthquake rundown here. Last 24 did not include any six magnitude quakes that I'm aware of. There are some volcanic news to come up with here, but let's just scroll up the list real quick. We're going to note deep quakes and quakes above a six magnitude. And there's a deep quake in western South America at 252 kilometers. There's another one at 191 kilometers and a larger depth. Similarly sized quakes kicking off very close to each other. Uh, about two hours apart there. As Puerto Rico continues to get hit with aftershocks. And there's one way out in the Aleutians. A deep quake 137 kilometers at a 4.9 magnitude at Sitkin Island, a bunch of volcanic islands in the Aleutian chain. Here's a deep quake at Fiji, a 4.8 magnitude with 332.5 kilometer depth. And here's another volcano, 1,100 meters above sea level at Hawaii. Let's take a quick look at that to see if it's underneath Mauna Loa's magma chamber. It looks like it's more underneath Kilauea. And there's a location of that. Located right under Kilauea's magma chamber. And let's get back to the list here. Again, that 2.5 magnitude magmatic quake at a depth of negative 1.1 kilometers, otherwise known as 1,100 meters above sea level. And we see one more deep quake here. That one at Argentina, farther south from those other deep South American quakes, but also near the west coast. 5.3 magnitude at 162 kilometers depth. Another deep quake at Alaska, also in the Aleutians. 108 kilometers depth, 5.0 magnitude. And let's move on to talk about pressure maps. 
By the way, check out windy.com if you'd like a mobile app that's got all kinds of weather data on it. It's quite amazing. Let's advance this via the GFS forecast. And I just threw coffee on my keyboard again. I don't know why I do that every morning, but we hope it amuses you. Anyway, there's the pressure maps according to the GFS forecast. We'll let that advance till about 12 Zulu tomorrow. And there's about 12 noon universal time tomorrow, as the U.S. is still surrounded by a bunch of high-pressure zones, multiple anticyclones all around the U.S. If you're wondering what time it is when we made the video, it's 4.26 a.m. And Wendy, you need to give me control of my computer back. Hey, thanks. Let's talk about Tall Volcano. Somebody had an interesting wedding. Check it out. That's, that's quite a photo, huh? Tall Volcano, I believe, erupted to a 55,000 magnet, uh, 55,000 foot ash plume yesterday. Stratospheric level eruption, even so close to the equator, as more global cooling forcing factors hit the atmosphere. So get ready to see some more purple sunrises and sunsets, folks. Everyone was calm and relaxed until at nighttime it started to get a little bit more muddy as mud was raining down from the sky on their wedding reception. Some amazing lightning strike images all over the internet, and I won't dwell on it because a million other channels are covering it, and frankly, we're bored. But there's some lightning from their wedding party. Nice job, Randolph Evan Photography. Well done. And there's a time-lapse photo that you'll see all over the internet constantly all day today. Also on the list of volcanoes erupting today are Mount Aso, producing an unknown size ash plume. Sakurajima, 8,000 foot ash plume there. Mount Takono, flight level 7,000. Fuego, possible emissions. Unable to detect Sab and Kaya, whether or not it's erupting. Please do not pole vault the caldera. Talk about climate change. Doctor Who's new doctor, played by Jodie Whittaker, is getting a little too preachy. Spoilers. Apparently, uh, Doctor Who Series 12, Episode 3, Orphan 55, has got its fans divided with the climate change narrative. Ouch. Too much politics in your sci-fi? Anyway... Another article about climate change. Here's a quote. Orphan 55 will go down as one of my worst, my top five worst episodes of New Who, referring to the new female Doctor Who. The characters in this episode range from annoying to straight up selfish. Yet another fan tweeted. Plus the post-apocalyptic Earth twist comes right the F out of nowhere, Shyamalan style, and turns the episode from bad Doctor Who episode to bad Captain Planet episode a crappy-ass Hanna-Barbera cartoon from the 80s. I half expected the Doctor to say at the very end of the episode, but the power is yours! NASA's also fighting climate change, launching a pair of satellites to track sea level rise. Are you scared of sea level rise, folks? Are you as scared as the Obamas who just bought a $12 million oceanfront property? Anyway, the Sentinel slash Jason Sentinel Six slash Jason Continuity of Service mission will waste tons and tons of your taxpayer dollars, taxpayer dollars, measuring sea level rise to wait for it a margin of error of about an inch. Now, considering <laughs> considering how much sea level rise has happened. Uh, let's just let's just move on, and we'll link the article below the video. Let's head to Toto on the web, realclimatescience.com, where Tony Heller talks all about the actual scenario regarding sea level rise. We've linked to that also. Shout out to Tony. We're trying to get you on the show. Drop us a line if you watch the videos. Anyway, it turns out some continents are sinking and some continents are rising, and we have a massive disparity in between tide gauges and satellite data, as well as massive error trends and all kinds of stuff. 
that is not understood by your average climate nerd. Fortunately, Tony Heller is not your average client science nerd. Tony Heller is uh, more of a computer scientist here. Somebody who understands how to debug software, for instance. And uh, let's just move on. Here's where the lightning's striking. A bunch over the central Mediterranean. Let's see what's happening in the U.S. Columbus, there's thunder rolling in. Next time you hear some, check out lightningmaps.org. And see where the action's happening. Here's a U.S. jet stream map, and we see a major uh, focusing acceleration of the jet stream right over Lake Ontario there. And then it heads up into the North Atlantic, and it splits into two distinct portions. One of them blasting cold air down in Africa, and the other one blasting warm air uh, up into wherever that is, the UK. <laughs> anyway, let's zoom out. Here's the Western jet streams. Let that animate. And you can see that jet stream flowing practically east to west once again over there, doubled up jet streams, and just general oddities in the jet stream for the past years. Here's the eastern world. And we see a big anticyclone over the Pacific Ocean also, right there in the center of the screen. And let's just move on to look at value-added services like the U.S. Doppler radar map. And there you have that. And we'll let that play through one more time and keep the thing moving to go look at the U.S. water vapor map. And there's that data. And let's look at the convergence over Missouri here as there are some pressure gradients smashing together, possibly even mashing together. Hopefully not bashing your sash into the trash. Put on your sash. Anyway, there's the convergence zone over the central U.S. The cold, warm demarcation line would be around Missouri or Iowa. And Illinois. And let's move on to the cosmology segment. We've got an article about gamma ray sources. Pulsar J1907 plus 631, Pulsar J1905 plus 600, Pulsar J1907 plus 602. Trying to resolve the gamma ray source there. Not sure if it's from a pulsar wind nebula or if it is from multiple pulsars affecting each other in the floor in the foreground or if the activity is all at the same basic focal distance. So perhaps check out this article, Probing the Origin of the Very High Gamma Ray Burst from 1907 plus 062. By the way, if you want to look that up in the Neil Gorel Swift Observatory, the Burst Alert Telescope, well, you're not going to find it, but there is one pulsar in that series there, Pulsar J1907 plus 06. If you want to go check that out, be our guest. We always link the Neil Gorel Swift Observatory. And thanks to our new forum members. Check out smashomash.org, where we welcome you to the neo-renaissance. And we uh, encourage you to come down here and click on the newly veiled smash -o forum. We've got, some, we got a new topic that we just put up this morning. Thanks to all the new viewers, we've practically tripled our, uh, our forum membership in the past week. So thanks, everybody, for that. Start posting stuff. We've put another object in the most here, and it's the most intrinsically bright object in the Milky Way galaxy as far as we can see from Earth. Cygnus X3, otherwise known as Deneb, massive X-ray binary located at about 2,600 light years. It's believed to be the Cestial North Pole at the other end of the precessional cycle. It's also a constant source of cosmic rays, which is super easy to, to say because of its 4.8 hour periodicity. So anyway, folks, thanks again for signing up for the forum. We appreciate that. Please start posting stuff. Here's the latest topic, which is what's inside Earth. Is it full of hard candies? 
Is it hollow with it lattice at the core? Is there a liquid iron slash nickel iron outer core acting like a mechanical magnetic dynamo as it rotates around a solid nickel iron core? Is it made from liquid metallic hydrogen? Where do all the electrons come from? What generates the geomagnetic fields? Are there heavy elements down there or light elements? Why didn't the Soviets find basalt under the bedrock? Why are there so many fossils down there? Why is there so much hydrogen down there? Why are there so many light elements down there? That's a start. Read about the Kola Deep borehole and get involved with the most boring story ever told as the Soviets set the world record for the deepest borehole ever at about 7.5 miles depth. What's inside the earth, folks? Well, there's a lot of water down there, hot mineralized water, a bunch of fossils, Unexpected gases like helium, hydrogen, nitrogen, and even carbon dioxide from microbes, and actually fossils. Did you expect there to be fossils in granite 6,700 meters below the surface? Why isn't there basalt down there? Why do people totally not understand what's going on inside of planets and stars? Well, it's because we just don't know yet. So once again, welcome to the Neo-Renaissance. Look for the shirts coming soon. It's the 3C405 shirt featuring the radio image of massive radio galaxy Cygnus A. There's the higher res version of it. It also features a link to smashomash.org. And let's play a clip from George W. Bush. I know the human being and fish can coexist peacefully. Now, were you aware that human beings and fish can coexist peacefully? Now, don't take it out of context, folks. There was a reason he said it. It was because of hydroelectric dams messing up fish. Let's talk about non-messed up fish. Have you watched us on Twitch lately? We put up a nearly three-hour live stream yesterday of our goldfish tank. So if you'd like a screensaver, check it out. Here's a, a long, long video featuring Jaws and Phelps. Now, Jaws likes to chug air and Phelps like to sift through gravel. So check it out, Twitch TV, Twitch TV, twitch.tv slash smash You can find all that stuff. Also, please press like and subscribe on YouTube. And please share on your social media if you enjoy the content. Thanks to our new viewers. Did you watch our cosmology segment two days ago? Did you watch yesterday's daily space weather video? Again, thanks to all our new viewers. We're also on Facebook. Do you uh, follow us there? It's facebook.com slash smashomash. And I'm not going to wait for it to load as Mark's software is like wading through a swamp. We're also on some alternative social media like minds.com. That's minds.com slash smashomash and gab and bitshoot, another repository for our videos as we would not be surprised to see our YouTube channel deleted at any moment for no apparent reason and with no explanation. Also, thanks to our patrons, the actual associate and assistant producers of the channel. Thanks for your continuing support. Check out the ringtone that we sent through today. It's for gold members only, so if you're going to join, join at the gold level. And thanks again, Smash Team. Stay tuned for a, a bonus a feature. We're going to look at the 335 angstroms view real quick of the local yellow dwarf. And we're going to thank everybody for viewing, and we are going to exit stage right. So thanks again for tuning in, everybody. Remember to stare at the sun. When you do so, don't drink. Use the proper instruments, such as the SDO or perhaps a solar filter. And certainly don't drive. And since it'll never be now again, may that solar wind be at your back and that atherosclerosis absent from your veins.